Hello and welcome to the Foundry's Furnace Core Tutorials for Final Cut Pro. Kronos is Furnace Core's retimer. It lets you slow down or speed up footage right on Final Cut's timeline without causing the kind of softening and frame doubling artifacts seen with blending base retimers. How does it do that? Via optical flow, or the art of figuring out how pixels flow from one frame to another. This pixel flow is describing using motion vectors, which show each pixel moves from frame to frame. With accurate motion vectors, it is possible to generate an output image at any point throughout the timeline in this sequence by interpolating along the direction of the motion. So what we're doing here is using Kronos to generate new frames in between the original frames in this sequence. We're going to take a look how I set up this shot. As I mentioned before, you can use Kronos to speed up footage or to perform speed ramps whilst adding motion blur so as to make the result look seamless. I'm not going to cover this here, but once you've learned the basics, you should be able to get stuck into creating all sorts of retimes of different speeds. Before you start the tutorial, you should download the relevant scripts and image sequences from the Foundry website. Once you've done this, we can begin. Among the image sequences for the actual Kronos tutorial, you should find the water waves. If you just play through this, what we're going to do is do a half speed slowdown for this. So, if we just drag this to the timeline, drop this on. Worth doing now is actually apply the actual Kronos node. So, these live in effects, and they actually live in actual video filters, and they actually live in Furnace Core tab. Now, even if you actually install the previous incarnations of Furnace, the new Furnace option will actually be listed as Furnace Core, so all the updates you'll get will actually be for these actual plugins. So if we click on the actual Kronos and drag and drop it onto our piece of footage, and double click it, just put this back onto the bin. So if we click on the Filters tab, we gain the actual control the parameters for the actual Kronos node. Now you'll see here we have a host of different parameters and the main one we need to concern ourselves with here is the speed parameter. Now this is by default set to 0 0.5 so we're doing a half speed slowdown. So just for this example we're going to leave these default settings as they are and get a render of this to see exactly what the Kronos node does. So I'll go ahead and produce a render. Just play through the render. Well that's a great start and in some circumstances that's all you'll need to do. I personally want to tune this one up a little bit, as there's some point here, there's a little bit of blurring going on of the fields, uh, some blurring of the elements. Now there's also a big problem, which is that the source footage has been slowed down, but the actual overall length of the clip hasn't changed, so we only see half of the slowdown clip. Let's go back to Final Cut to fix this. Now what we need to do here is to convince Final Cut that the source clip is longer than it actually is. Now to do this, we're going to set this shot again. So to do this, we need to actually set up another sequence. I've called mine Water and Slug. So, let's go back to the image sequence. As we guessed it, I mean to bring back our actual image sequence. It's back on there. Just double click on it. Bring up the viewer. What we need to do is actually put on a slug for this. So we just get ourselves a slug. Drop this on. Now what we need to do is actually make this the same length, or roughly the same length, as our actual image sequence. Now the quickest way to do this is just to drop it on top, match the image sequence, and drop it back on again. Now, we don't actually need the audio files for this, so we'll just delete them, and bring them back up. So now we have our actual image sequence, and a clean black slug at the end, which is the same length as our sequence. So now we've done this, it's all well and good. However, Final Cut still does not believe is that this actually is doubling the sequence length. So what we need to do is get ourselves a new sequence. I'm calling mine Combine Water and Slug. And what I need to do now here is grab our Water and Slug sequence and just drag it onto our timeline. Now I've actually convinced Final Cut that this sequence is double the length of the original. Now once again we just need to remove the actual sound files from this. You can keep these on but I'd like to get rid of them. So now I've done this, what we need to do is apply the actual Kronos node again. So we need to go back into the filters and into the furnace core and simply drag and drop this onto the actual timeline. Now if we double click on a sequence, 
Final Cut will try to be helpful and take us back to the original sequence, which doesn't really do us any favours. What we need to do is go back to our combined sequence and right click on this and do Open in Viewer. Now this will give us access to the actual parameters of our actual Kronos node. Now we're going to leave the actual parameters as default settings again and actually see if it actually solves our problem. So get a render of this and we can view the results. Press play now. We can see that this is exactly what we wanted. We're getting half speed slowdown, yet we're getting all of the actual clip, not just half of it. You'll see at the end of the actual clip will have a little bit of blurring on here. This is just because we have the transition from actual footage to black slug. And what you'll need to do here is actually trim this off for the final result. Now, as you can see, we're still getting a few little blurring elements here. And what I need to do is go back into Final Cut and adjust the parameters to fix this. That means go back to the Filters tab and actually set some of the parameters here. First of all, you see the method. Now, this is set to actual motion estimation. Now this is the optical flow vector interpolation and you to calculate the in-between frames. If we drop this down, we can see we have frame, blend and motion. The first option, frame, takes the nearest frame for the calculation to perform the retime. We have blend. It's between two frames and is used for the in-between frame. Now this is actually quite quick to render and it's useful when actually tweaking the parameters of the timing before you actually go for the full-on motion estimation. We also have timing. By default, this is set to speed, which controls the speed option here, which is slowing down by 0 0.5. We also have the source frame, which we use to perform speed wraps, and we'll be covering how to use this source frame method in the next tutorial. But for the time being, we're just going to cover speed. We also have speed, and of course, you can actually change this to speed things up or slow things down. Anything below 1 will slow the image sequence down. Anything above one will actually increase the speed. So we'll leave the speed at 0 0.5 because we're on a half slowdown. What we can also see here is the actual vector detail. Now this parameter alters the number of vectors Kronos generates for each frame. A value of 1 means 1 vector per pixel, and a lower value means fewer, so 1 per 4 pixels. More vectors take more time to process, and whilst it may sound like increasing this is always a good idea, Bear in mind that for 99% of shots, most pixels in the local area move together, and so don't actually need one vector per pixel to generate an actual retime. Now, too high a vector density can also result in too much local motion detail, which often appears as chattering along object edges. Now, for this shot, actual vector detail of 0 0.3 is a good value. Now, we also have the actual warp mode. Now, you can actually change the warp mode to occlusions. So let's do this here. Now, this is an advanced option that can improve the results when not doing a separated picture build with multiple vector sequences and mats. It tends to reduce the level of background dragging that occurs between the foreground and the background objects. Now, it all sounds very techy, right? But for long and short of it, if you're seeing some background dragging that occurs between the foreground and the background objects, turn this on to see if it looks better and for this case it actually improves the results. Kronos has the ability to actually add motion blur to the sequence as well and we can control these by using the shutter time and the shutter samples. Now for more information on how to use these actual parameters please view the motion blur tutorial. So let's get a render of this and view the results. I actually change the parameter to this, and, and by increasing the actual vector detail and changing the warp mode to occlusions, we have refined the render, it's a little more crisper, and the background dragging that occurs that we saw in the previous renders has been eliminated.